Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Digital Alex. I'm really happy to be uh, doing another Clash Royale video. What you're seeing on the screen, uh, first and foremost, is a new deck that I'm pushing. It is a Hog Lightning deck. And I opened up a uh, Ice Wizard in a, a Crown Chest. So we're actually blessed with the Legendary on a... This is a new account that I made for uh, Clan uh, Chests. But uh, it was a level 6 for a while, then I accidentally donated a little too much. So I went into level 7. So this is a, a Frozen Peak challenge. This is me trying to reach Frozen Peak with this account. I'm going to have a combination of gameplays for you guys. I'm uh, just going to show you how, what the best pushes are. It's just some defenses. And the most ideal hand is what you guys are seeing right now. It is a Hog, Knight, and Zap. So basically, you know, you want to send the hog off first because ideally this is a hog push uh, deck. This is a hog cycle deck. And, uh, well, the correction, it's not exactly a hog cycle deck. It's just we're pushing a hog in this deck. It's about 3.4 elixir, something like that. So you can still get to the hog fast enough to call it a cycle deck. But the idea of it is just to really, just to push hog and... Uh, not a lot of other win conditions with this deck except the Hog, so that's that's all I can say about that. Now, this deck is much different than what I usually play. I usually play a chipper deck, and so the fundamentals of this wasn't really stationed on that. This is this is more of a siege style, I would suppose. Uh, it's not really a control card. I have a defense in this deck, and that's an Inferno Tower. So it's not really a control deck either. Uh, the Inferno Tower is really for defense, for Lava Hounds, uh, Inferno Dragons, Baby Dragons. Uh, it shuts down P.E.K.K.A.s, Giants. Uh, it doesn't really shut down Barbs. Um, I was playing a, uh, a Furnace in, in my previous deck, and that those Fire Spirits actually can shut down uh, Barbs really, really well. So, uh, if we're, we're just going to check out the gameplay just a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to narrate and you guys will just see just how some of the gameplay can go. Uh, the reason I pushed this hog was because I had Zap on hand. I didn't really hesitate uh, holding him in my hand. Uh, just knowing I can possibly do something with him. I didn't want to just sit there and look at him. So, so uh, Prince, Prince was a lot of trouble for this deck. If a person had a Prince and they were uh, they were pushing a Prince, it, sh it like it just takes two uh, shots and then that's it. The Inferno Tower is pretty much down. Um, minions weren't a big deal. Minions are not a big deal if you have Zap. Um, otherwise, it slows down the Inferno a lot. The best um, push counter that I saw was people dropping a Skarmy in front of any tank that they would push. So I quickly learned to zap that or hold my zap on hand even though I have a uh, hog, cy you know, hog cycle deck. I had to learn quickly to uh, try and hold on to that. Thankfully in, the, in this game I was able to uh, hold off on some of my troops that I needed for a sprint and uh, we actually we, we did pretty pretty good in this one. So the second one was against uh, a clanmate from Churros. This was an Expo deck. I actually was a little bit surprised at the way he played defense over here. He drops a Skarmy, but then he puts the Expo in the back. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that to play. And then he ha <laughs> and then he puts his Miner right over there. So I was a little bit, honestly, I was a little bit surprised to see some of the players uh, that were level 9s and level 8s being that I'm level 9 on my main account, i never done anything like that to put a, an expo in the corner to defend myself. You know, I feel like if I would do that, I would cause more damage uh, for myself than I can defend. I think what he should have done is he should have put it in the middle and he didn't do that. So I went ahead and uh, lightning all of that. Um, this, uh, the golem wasn't really as frightening as what's going on the left. On the left, he puts Skarmy to distract my Inferno, and that pretty much does slow down everything that I was supposed to do with the golem. So that guy was perfect, actually. So it was my mistake to put the uh, wizard there. I should have put him on the left to completely uh, shut down his uh, Skarmy push. Thankfully, we didn't do a lot of damage, so 
even though I'm a level seven, it's it, like he just he didn't do a lot of damage, and I think um, I think that's what ultimately allowed me to win this match is because his golden push wasn't as strong as he wanted to. He does have a level two minor, so props to that. The level two minor um, definitely you have to open up two minors, so so that was a that was a pretty good. Now I saw a lot of strong baby dragons. I saw a lot of level fours, level fives. Um, level threes, those were really strong baby dragons. When I would play a baby dragon in my deck, I'd never really had them that strong. So I think it's uh, it's really cool to see people are focusing on the cards that they want to keep, and they're just upgrading those cards. So uh, at this point, what you're seeing is the best way to counter a golem is just completely uh, starts burning down on a golem, and then even both of the golemites go towards Inferno. So ideally, if you play it right, you should still have the Inferno Tower standing. That's what I'm trying to say. So at this point, he was getting annoyed with it. He just threw a fireball on it, which I think was a pretty big waste of fireball. You, usually, you just attack a tower and that's it. So at this point, I didn't really have anything to worry about. It was just 278 on his tower, and I knew that it was, with, it was literally within lightning range. I think I have my lightning is... Uh, I think I have a level 2 or level 3 lightning or something like that. It deals 280 damage. So basically, just with one hit, we, uh, we got his tower. So it was really fun. Actually, I was, uh, uh, this deck is like is bringing a lot of joy lately. You know, just playing it and not having a, any trouble with it. So, that's, so this guy, uh, he was fuming off the bat. I don't know what was going on. I think he was fuming because he saw that I was a, a lower level. So he was a little bit pissed with that. So he started throwing all these angry emotes and... Uh, so he has a pretty good push going. He freezes uh, all of my troops. I quickly knew I had to start doing some distracting. So I threw a zap on his troops. Thankfully, thankfully my Inferno uh, locked onto his baby dragon and we didn't take any additional damage. He's still throwing out angry emotes. And I think, I don't know if you guys remember, but when I was pushing Jungle Arena, I would get level 10s and when I was level 8 or I would get level 6s and 7s and that was like the most frustrating thing because you don't want to play people that are lower levels and you don't want to play people that are higher. So uh, he has a really good uh, counter push here. He has a, a balloon and a baby dragon. I didn't put down my inferno tower here because I just thought the baby dragon would just waste out the uh, inferno and I would, you know, and I would block myself out with a lot of uh, used elixir and I couldn't defend against the balloon. So I put down uh, a little bit lighter troops. I got into a nag of dropping the uh, the hog, not in the center, like I, I don't know if like, this is going to be like a weird animation, but basically you have a line right in the center of your uh, king tower and everything to the left and right of it is wherever the troops go, you know, stuff like that. So I got into a nag placing right between the left lane and the center lanes, just putting that hog to have him ho jump over the river. And I noticed it does a lot better than just sending him down the lane. Because at this point he jumps over everything. And But the main uh, setback is if a person puts a defense on the opposite side. But I think it's very rare that you'll see people uh, doing that. So. All in all, a very, very fun deck. Now, at this point, he started throwing out a, a Tesla. You do not see Tesla a lot. P Tesla is really underrated. It's a really, really strong card. If you play Clash of Clans, Tesla is OP. It pops out of nowhere. It shuts down, uh, like, literally zaps troops down. I mean, you can have a heal spell and it'll still stop uh, troops. So he starts uh, protecting his towers with, uh, with Teslas. I'm doing a fair amount of damage to him because I'm using lightning. Had it not been for lightning, I probably would have taken a little bit more... Uh, I would have taken a little bit less damage and I would start getting draws. One thing I also like about this deck is that I can avoid draws. I have enough here, strong chippers uh, at people's uh, towers where I can uh, avoid uh, getting a draw. So at this point, I saw that he was starting to defend himself with the Tesla. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to line up my cards to a point where I can send a hog, but then I can also send the lightning down. And then when I send the lightning down, that was gonna get his Tesla because that's when they're open. And uh, so at this point, uh, I just got just a zap in. We did just a little chip damage. I still have 45 seconds. So that's, that's more than enough time. You know, that's more than enough time. So at this point, I have a lightning in my hand. So he sends a balloon. I'm gonna drop down his uh, the Inferno. 
and I'm putting the spear, spear gobs on the left side and that's just enough to stop him. So at this point we're getting a little chip damage here too. We're stopping his minions with my uh, wizard. I put the king in the back in case he throws something. So at this point I put the, uh, the hog down and then I have lightning on hand. We zap that and that's it. That was done so for Shonzo. That was, a, that was probably the best uh, uh, gameplay that I could have uh, set. So we're coming closer to uh, Frozen Peak Arena. This is just one of the two battles that is left. This is Pachon. Pachon had a uh, typical balloon deck that people are playing in, uh, in kind of in Royal Arena. Balloon is very strong, but I think people are playing it just, they, they send the, the balloon naked. You cannot play the balloon naked. Like you see like stuff like this, that's just, it's like, it's not gonna do, it's not gonna be very effective, you know, and you're not playing an investigator here where you're trying to find out what the other person's cards are, you're trying to attack a tower. So I think the best way to send the balloon is to draw out any air defense that the person has first. And then once you find out what the person has, you play it. This could be in overtime, this could be in uh, maybe like a minute into the game, you know. You have to find out first what cards the person has. I don't, I mean, that's why I think I never really played decks like that, because I didn't really have the patience to find out what the other person had. I kind of want decks where I can just go in, attack, and if, if they have something that I'm like, oh wow, this can count on my card, that's okay because I already attacked their towers, you know. I didn't need to like wait and find out. So that's why I didn't really want to do stuff like that as far as uh, choosing decks. So now, as you can see, this was a classic play that I would learn to do. I would drop the Inferno, and on the opposite side, I would put something else that the Inferno Tower was attacking. So in essence, I was increasing the strength of the Inferno Tower. So really, really good gameplays. <laughs> I'm throwing uh, some... I throw some BM in these games, but like this guy's a level 9. Had I not upgraded my... Uh, Arena towers accidentally, accidentally, had I not upgraded, this would have been such a clutch game because the card levels were pretty much the same. Okay, I think I upgraded one card and that was the Inferno Tower. And then when I upgraded the card, that's when it went up. But you see, prior to that, I was doing a lot of donations, and as you know, donations give you so I, sh I should have just not donate, that's what I should have done. But I didn't have any gold for the Inferno Tower, so anyway, I'll keep that in mind for the next time. But uh, enough of that. So you see, I put a Spear Goblin to kind of increase the strength of the Inferno Tower. That stopped that balloon. If a balloon uh, is sent in the, in the... If I put the Inferno Tower away from the balloon as it's coming, and I have Ice Wizard to slow it down, it's going to stop it enough to a point where it might not even do any damage to the Inferno Tower. But if I let the balloon hit the Inferno Tower, it does almost 80% damage. And if it's uh, raged or anything like that, it could actually take down the Inferno and the Balloon will go for my tower. Usually raged Balloons uh, gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, once I upgraded the card, my car, like my card, and I went to level 7, that's when I started having trouble. I just couldn't win any games here. So at this point, uh, his tower is at level 6. It, just, it wasn't really difficult. We did really, really good with this gameplay. So at this point we have a uh, we have Bombachi. Bombachi was a typical deck. He had a uh, fire wizard, he had minions, and he had a baby dragon. I kind of got a little bit like I didn't get tired of it. I actually learned how to defend myself against these cards, but I noticed like a lot of people were playing that. They were either pushing a giant or they were pushing a Pekka. So incidentally, this guy's uh, pushing deck uh, Decca. So incidentally, this guy is pushing Pekka. So, uh, pretty strong, but the way to play P.E.K.K.A. is, like, I'm not trying to tell you, like, how to play these cards, but what I'm seeing in these gameplays, the way to play a P.E.K.K.A. is you know the best way to stop it, and then you know what the best counters is for that. And then when you know what those counters are, you have those cards on hand when you push P.E.K.K.A., okay? So that's Zap, Arrows, you may have to have two, okay? Like, that'll just help you cycle your P.E.K.K.A. quicker. But you see, if I had an Inferno Tower, if a person was pushing P.E.K.K.A. and in front of that they put a Skarmie or something else that my Inferno Tower locked onto, my Inferno Tower was getting slowed down, okay? Because for me to attack a troop, it has to heat up as well. So you see, at this point, 
my pe my inferno tower completely locked onto Spekka and just took it out, and it wasn't even a big deal. Then he even went onto his uh, fire wizard and took that out as well. So you see, he had Zap on hand. So I would say that that was a little too early for him to push. He should have get his fireball out of the way, get some chip damage, and then he would have the Zap. Uh, he would have his. Um, wizard and Pekka and then he will completely protect the Pekka push that's my opinion okay but that's how I kind of learned to defend myself from it because I kept cards because I knew what they were pushing with it okay like I kept zap on hand I kept uh, lightning on hand if I wanted to get the, the fire wizard out from behind it gave me some chip damage it slowed me down a little bit but it was it wasn't too bad um, I would say So here comes his P.E.K.K.A. again. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of waiting to see what he does. So sure enough, he puts down um, a Skarmy. I zapped that. It's you see, it still didn't lock on. So I put down my Skarmy. That, that completely locks on. But you see what he does here? He zaps my Inferno Tower, and that slows it down. And it goes to something else, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. So he was kind of uh, learning to do that. But in my opinion, that was a little bit too late. We have 20 seconds in the game. My towers are completely untouched. I mean, we're both good players, you know. I mean, it's going to take a lot for him to get a thousand points off of my buildings. And I want to do everything I can not to let that happen. So I throw down a, a wizard. I get... I throw down the lightning. I get his wizard. I get 250 damage on his towers. So see, at this point, he gets a little desperate. He doesn't really have anything on hand to, uh, to stop uh, my Inferno Tower from taking down his P.E.K.K.A. So I'm kind of like commiserating with him. But at the same time, I was like, okay, dude, I, I still have to win. So I'm just getting chip damage. I took my zap and my lightning, and that's it. I was donezo for Shunzo. All right, so at this point, we have Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo, again, he's, this dude's playing P.E.K.K.A., but he has a uh, P.E.K.K.A. Witch Push. And on top of it, he has a clone card. So I don't know, he probably watched some YouTubers, and he was like, yo, I'm going to play this card. You know, like when you were playing basketball when you were younger, and you saw all of these, like, alley oops that people were doing? And then you wanted to do that when you're playing, only to find out that you're gonna get schooled. You know how people would dribble, and like they would dribble like up like around the play or stuff like that, or like they would make all these like trick shots and stuff like that. I remember doing that only to like get the ball stolen from me. This is what this guy was doing with his clone card. Okay, watch what he's gonna do now. I got my uh, I got my Inferno Tower going, and then I get I throw a lightning to get his witch out. Look what he's doing. He's gonna clone this card right now. How are you gonna clone that? You don't clone a card in the midst of things when everything is shooting at it. So whatever, dude. <laughs> and then he throws a well played. I was like, dude, yes, thank you. It was well played. So anyway, you know, like he was a good sport. Uh, him and the guy that was throwing like a whole bunch of angry emotes, like they were all really, really good sports. And I think like lately I kind of cooled off with this game. I haven't been as upset when I would lose stuff, you know? Like, I lately, like, you notice, like, just with my gaming history with this, like, I would get upset when I can't trophy push or I get shut down. But lately, I just kind of, I don't know, I just kind of have, like, a more... Like, I just realized, look, it's just a game, let me take it easy, like, it's not a big deal, you know? So, I'm seeing that in the lower arenas, people are still cool, you know? They're, like, they're not all angry and stuff like that. When you get up there and people have a lot at stake, they get pretty ticked off. So at this point, I like okay. I took a really dangerous turn here. I waited, I waited for him to for those fire spirits to get into my tower, so then I could throw down my Skarmy. So that was a very very tricky push, like a defense that I had to do. But if I threw my Skarmy, I would have nothing to defend myself. So then we have a, a hog completely taking down his tower. So, you see, he's a really good sport. He's throwing a thumb, thumbs up. So I put down my Inferno just because I wanted to cycle to other cards. So I start playing everything in the back because uh, his towers can't hit me. And I still don't want stuff to cross my bridge where I'm kind of stuck with those cards. So I kind of try to separate stuff from his P.E.K.K.A. and his Witch and his Valk. So we actually did that. We took the his P.E.K.K.A. down. We uh, Now we're taking down his Valkyrie. I'm gonna throw a, an early good game. He knows that it's a, it was a good game. He, he says thanks, and yeah, he didn't really put up much of a fight. He just played just casually after that. All right, so now this is the last game, guys. So I'm gonna wrap it up after this. 
Um, I haven't had like any special chest openings on my main channels, on my main accounts. I had like a giant chest. I didn't get any legendary chest. If I get a legendary chest, you guys are gonna be the first to find out. Now at this point, I'll, I'll be honest, I was a little nervous, but having had reached this arena before, I was okay. Uh, last night, once I leveled up, I lost like 200 trophies. It was really frustrating. I was like two games from getting to this uh, to this arena, and but that was okay. I kind of let it go. So at this point, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? So I just I put in a hog. He has a scar army, so I zap that. So at this point, I'm like, okay. I have a 500 point advantage already. This guy is two levels above me. I was like, I think that's it. This game is in the bag. So I just played a little bit carefully. I had the knight on hand. Um, that was perfect against the princess. He started pushing a uh, he started putting a giant, which I still wasn't sure what to put down because if he throws a scar me down, that can stop it. But see, he didn't do that. So I put down um, I put down the inferno and I distract that uh, the, the giant skeleton from dropping the bomb next to my inferno tower because I still want to keep it alive and uh, so then I just I send a naked hog not a big deal he has a uh, he has a P.E.K.K.A on the left side these P.E.K.K.A.s do a lot of damage not to mention this guy has a level 7 P.E.K.K.A. I think if I'm not mistaken I think that is a uh, uh, that is a tournament level P.E.K.K.A. if I'm not mistaken so at this point I wasn't really even too worried about his musketeer but I still had to slow it down just a little bit uh, we got a uh, we got a wizard going so we're gonna get one shot off of that and I have my knight in cycle with his princess so one suggestion I would give you uh, if you're trying to get a counter for a princess or a specific card try to have that card in cycle with their card so don't play it on anything else I know it may be hard but I think that's the uh, that's the fun part of picking the best deck for your uh, for your uh, gameplay. So I, I we're really we're really lucky with this deck. So again, I wait on the to play my Inferno Tower because I don't know if he's gonna play this Carmi. He doesn't. He doesn't. So we take down his uh, bomb, uh, his giant skeleton. His I realize he's keeping this Carmi for the hog. So we zap that hog. Not a big deal. Now I have this Carmi for his second giant. So he's he's not doing too hot, but at the same time he's not putting up a uh, he's not very easy. Okay, he's not very easy. He's he's playing both sides. He's uh, he's very he's a very strong player. I actually have not seen him play his tornado, and I think if he he played his tornado against my hog and maybe put it on the uh, like on his uh, king tower, you know that would have been good for him. But he did not do that. So we have 10 seconds. He throws a, a desperate fireball and he throws a mirror fireball. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. We have four seconds, three seconds. And uh, I, I, pre I take the game, and that gets me into uh, Frozen Peaks. And uh, really, really happy to be on a, a level 7 account in Frozen Peak. I remember when I was a uh, level 9, and it was really, really hard to get there. But I don't know. I realized what they do is once you upgrade your arenas, they match you with different players. Okay, when I was a level 6... They did not match me with a lot of difficult players, and I, it, was, it was really fun playing level 6. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will be having some really, really cool stuff coming out in the future. i just getting a little small business going, so maybe I'll have some stuff that I'm, I'm going to be selling, or maybe some really cool stuff that's going on in my life that I'll be sharing with you. I'll be in San Francisco here in about a week, so expect some really fun uh, gameplay. Maybe... I don't know, in San Francisco Bay, you guys will see me playing outside or something. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a good day.